All right. I'm going to call the June Southeast Consolidated Zoning Board meeting to order. If we could get roll call, please. <clears throat> Dan Foyle is absent. John Lloyd. Present. Kelly Rast. Present. Ken Klingensmith is absent. Fred Winger. Present. Dennis Bolin. And Emily Coleman. Here. Thank you. And Sherry, if you could give us the statement for the hybrid in-person virtual meeting. Sure. This meeting is now being recorded. Please silence all electronic devices. Please note, this meeting is being held in the board hearing room with zoning board members attending in person. There is also an option for virtual attendance on Zoom webinar. If you are using Zoom, you may participate in the meeting using your computer, telephone, or other electronic device. For Zoom participants, chat will be disabled once the meeting begins. If you have trouble with Zoom, please call 913-715-9666. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function in the Zoom app to notify planning staff of your desire to speak. To activate this function, click raise hand in the webinar controls at the bottom of the screen. By telephone, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Please do not utilize the raise hand function until the start of the agenda item about which you desire to comment. We will take comments from in-person attendees first followed by Zoom participants. The moderator will call on individuals who have raised their hand. When it is your turn to speak, the moderator will recognize you by name or telephone number used to join the Zoom webinar and your microphone will be unmuted. Please state your name and the city and the state where you reside for the record, followed by your comments. All public speakers will be limited to three minutes unless the chair designates a different time period in order to accommodate all speakers. If you share concerns, comments, or points made by others, please refrain from repeating those comments and instead note for the record that you agree with a previous individual's comments. The chair may modify these procedures as needed to conduct an orderly and efficient meeting. For board members, staff, and presenters, please state your name every time you begin talking, and please speak into the microphone so that the people attending via Zoom can hear you and so the comments can be transcribed for the record. This is a public meeting. We are presenting live and recording the meeting. Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Agenda items. Any additions, deletions, or revisions to the minutes? I mean, I'm sorry, to the agenda. I get a, a motion to approve the agenda. Emily Winger. Coleman, I motion to approve the agenda. Fred Winger, second. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Chat with the agenda. Disclosure of conflicts of interest. Okay. None. Disclosure of external contacts and discussions. Don't see any. Okay, approval of the minutes <clears throat> from the May meeting. Kelly Rast, I make a motion to approve the minutes from May 3rd, 2023. Emily Coleman, I second. Right, motion and a second. All in favor of approval of the May 3rd meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we've got our minutes approved from the last meeting. Board reports. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Zoning Board, Sean Penley, planning staff. Uh, the only items to note were the uh, cases that were considered by this Zoning Board last month. Um, there was a conditional use permit renewal for 19160 Metcalf Avenue for uh, Messengers Lawn and Landscape, uh, a CUP renewal, and then also a preliminary and final development plan for Metcalf 211 for two contractor storage warehouse buildings. This board recommended approval of both of those projects and they're scheduled for the June 22nd BOCC meeting. And I could give an update for planning commission actions as well. Yes. The, uh, the last meeting for the planning commission was on May 23rd. And for that meeting, the 
Planning Commission recommended approval of the amendments to the county's rural comprehensive plan. This is for the area related to the Northwest area, specifically the Sunflower Area Plan uh, concept plan that was recommended for update uh, in the comprehensive plan. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of that update. That's also scheduled for the June 22nd DOCC meeting. Uh, the next meeting for the Planning Commission will be this month on June 27th. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, no questions. So uh, we'll dive right into business before the board <clears throat> application SE 23294 PDP FDPAU 2924 Floyd Street and application SE 23295 CUP 20924 Floyd Street. So, uh, Phelps Engineering is the applicant. Lawn and Landscape Solutions are the landowner. Sean. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Sean Penley, County Planning Staff. I'll be presenting this case for Michelle Leininger. This uh, application is a request from Lawn and Landscape Solutions, uh, a site in Metcalf 211 Industrial Park. Uh, the request is for a revised preliminary and final development plan and a conditional use permit amendment for outdoor storage and uh, an additional driveway to the property. Uh, the subject property is located at 20924 Floyd Street. It's a, the site identified here on the vicinity map located within the interior of the Metcalf 211 Industrial Park. This is an aerial photo showing the existing conditions on the site. This is a, an existing um, business and the applicant is proposing an addition and some changes to the site. If you recall, this uh, site has been before this board before for a uh, a revision and future plans that are uh, planned for this site. So what the applicant is proposing now at this time is a revised final development plan and amendment to the CUP to allow an expansion of the outdoor storage area and to allow for a second driveway on Floyd Street. There's an existing driveway uh, here that's identified in the aerial map. The applicant will be proposing a second drive as part of this revision. This is a uh, Overall plan, site plan showing the, the site. Uh, it's hard to see at this scale probably, but the, the areas that, that are identified for proposed changes are outlined in red. And I'll, I'll zoom in on those to show the specific areas, but this is uh, basically related to the phase one part of this plan. There is a phase two that was also approved with a separate development, but the applicant is not moving forward with that area at this time until the extension of 210th Street, which, which will be with a later improvement. So what we're talking about is the existing area of the site on the north end. So the previous plan that was approved for this property uh, in January of this year, the applicant received approval for revisions to the site to allow for some changes to their outdoor storage area and parking as a result of uh, uh, future improvements of the phase two. So that change allowed for this configuration here on the left for their outdoor storage area. Uh, and this was approved with the changes to the outdoor storage and parking. What the applicant is proposing to change now with this phase, uh, with this recent update, is the second driveway, as I mentioned, which will be just north of their existing driveway. And that's to allow better circulation for their outdoor storage area. Um, and the Public Works Department has reviewed this plan, um, has no concerns given the fact that this is a local street. There will be no increase in truck traffic or, or increase in uh, circulation throughout the, the area. And this uh, improvement will uh, benefit for circulation on site. Um, the applicant will just need to get a driveway entrance permit, but there's no concerns with this location of this driveway as proposed. The other changes that are proposed with this include changes to their outdoor storage area. They'll be expanding this a little bit here to include part of the existing parking area that's uh, to the rear of the building. So that will require a revision to their fenced area and gate that's identified here in the other red circle area. Uh, there's no changes with this either as uh, the applicant is providing the required parking. They, uh, with the use of, uh, in a building this size, they're required to have a minimum of 39 parking spaces and they're showing 47 parking spaces with the proposed plan. So this will meet all of the requirements for parking. Um, so this change for the storage area will not be an issue for that as well. And they'll just need to revise their uh, their fencing and screening accordingly. Staff does have a recommendation for uh, some parking that's immediately adjacent to the revised 
fencing and gating gates, uh, just for the uh, uh, basically to allow for vehicles to back out and make sure they have adequate clearance. Staff does recommend that either those two parking spaces closest to the gate either be removed or that the applicant provide turning templates to show that there's no issues with cars backing out and having a conflict with the gates. But even if those spaces are removed, they can still provide the required parking and, and accessible parking as needed. But that stipulation is included in this development plan. Uh, all of the conditions that are on the preliminary development plan and final development plan are included in your staff report. Uh, the, the revised stipulations will apply to phase two, lot one. So this site and this site only that, that is included in your exhibit. The final development plan uh, should be constructed as developed as, as shown on the exhibit A. And for the conditional use permit, uh, as was recommended before, staff supports uh, approval of a, a CUP uh, for 10 year term as recommended previously. Staff does recommend approval of the revised development plan, final development plan, and amended CUP as stipulated. Um, that concludes our presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. The applicant is also here for any questions as well. Question, any questions for staff? This Keller, this is sort of pertaining, but I was just had a question with all the changes we did with the CUP and stuff. Um, did we extend the 10 year? Like, is it come? Is there a way that didn't we extend the 10 year? In terms CUP? of timing for terms of CUPs, uh -huh. for the recent amendments, you're referring to the amendments for the regulations for yeah. CUPs. No, that was only dealing with accessory buildings. Oh, so accessory. We, didn't, okay. we didn't change anything with any other CUPs. So there's uh, conditional use permits that will apply to a number of different types of uses. The only changes that were amended recently were for accessory buildings. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And the, just for the board's reference, the CUPs can be approved for a shorter or longer time period as recommended by the board and, and the, the zoning board, as well as the BOCC. You have the, the discretion to do that. Staff just recommends an um, extension of 10 years as previously approved. Thank you, Sean. Any other questions for Sean? Okay, thank you. Applicant. Um, board, thank you uh, for coming in tonight to hear uh, our only case tonight. Um, sure, appreciate your time. Uh, with me, to, uh, my name is Jed Clausen with Phelps Engineering, 1270 North Winchester, Olathe, Kansas, for the record. Uh, with me tonight is Sean Baxter, uh, property owner and owner of uh, the business, um, Lawn and Landscape Solutions on the property. This is a classic example of kind of wish we had 2020 hindsight, right, of you know, if we had start, you know, he's got this under construction about ready to finish phase one. But uh, Sean came to me and said, you know, I really would like kind of that Western, the back part of the parking lot to be behind the fence for security reasons. Um, uh, that's important for him and, and safety and, and security of, of his uh, operations. That's a big part of why the fence change was made. Of course, that triggered a revision in the CUP boundary, which is why we have to do that. Um, and then uh, the driveway so that we don't have to come in and make a hard 90 and then another hard 90 uh, just with, you know, the trucks and the trailers that, you know, associated with landscape operations that is just works a lot easier. So I uh, really feel like it's a pretty minor change. Uh, Sean, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? That's really it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Stand by. Let me see if we have any questions. Any questions for the applicants and the owner? All right. No questions. Right. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> wait, wait. I have one question, Jed. I know they're small, but uh, no problem with the stipulations. No, I think, you know, we talked about this, um, this parking space. Uh, you know, um, typically when we're laying out parking lots, if you have a dead end, something like that, like when the gate's closed, we would typically take that back curb, offset it five to six feet to provide a little bump out so that a car in that last space can turn and, and make that maneuver. Uh, that's typically the design standard. This would allow for uh, nine foot. Uh, so I think we would probably take that option of just showing a turning template or just show in the field that it, it'd work all right. And we can solve that with uh, the county staff uh, at the time of striping and stuff. So 
um, but really no other issues with the steps. I think they were consistent with what was previously approved. All right. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Thank you. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, I'm going to make a pretty safe guess that we don't have any public comments since everybody in here has already spoken. So anybody out there on Zoom land? No. Okay. I think we can close the public comments. Uh, any discussion by the board? No, nope. this is Kelly Rass. I think it's all fine and makes sense. And I'd even consider bumping it to a 15 year CUP. We do that, we can, can't we? Uh, yes, uh, the Sean Penley planning staff, the board can recommend a shorter or longer term for the CUP okay. and, and that can forward on to the board of county commissioners. Okay. I agree with uh, John Lloyd. I agree with Kelly on that. Thank you, Sean. <clears throat> Other folks? Uh, Fred Winger. Yeah, everything seems very reasonable and I'd support 15 years too. All right. I would very much go along with the 15 year. All right. Mike Coleman agreed. All right. Well, since you added extra words, you can make the motion. Oh. <laughs> okay. Kelly Rass. Staff recommends approval of the revised preliminary and final development plan and amended CUP for expanded outdoor storage yard and second driveway on the property located at 20924 Floyd Street for reasons and subject to the stipulations outlined in the staff report and a recommendation of a 15 year CUP term. Emily Coleman, I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. <clears throat> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we'll recommend that up to the board. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. The uh, This application will be considered by the Board of County Commissioners on July 20th, 2023, in this meeting room at 9.30 a.m. with the Board, uh, board of County Commissioners, and um, it will be final action for this case. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other business. I think we have a meeting announcement for July. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the meeting, regularly scheduled meeting for the Southeast Zoning Board is uh, the next meeting would be July fifth. However, we have no applications scheduled for that meeting, so therefore the meeting will be canceled. Perfect. All right. With that said, any other business from anybody? I just need a motion to adjourn then. Emily Coleman, I motion to adjourn. Fred Winger, second. All right, a uh, motion is second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Stand adjourned, I guess, until August. <laughs>